Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between, and in the comments below, let me know your favorite pick of the week so you could get a chance to be featured on the episode. Before I get started, I do have a Kickstarter, Witches of Oz, so if you're very excited for the Wicked movie, this is a perfect book to pick up, where you actually get to see Glinda and the Wicked Witch get together, you get to see Glinda's origin stories, so hopefully you go check that one out. But let's jump in. I, I've been gone for two weeks. I, I went to Japan, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, now I'm back and, and reviewing the comics. So actually, this week was a pretty heavy haul with 14 books. And number 14 for me was Avengers Assemble issue three. I've been getting this on, I, I would guess say whim, but honestly, I'm just a Julie Power fan. So I just want to see what she's up to. If you're kind of running the middle Avengers book. There's nothing too crazy going on. I think the thing that makes this a little bit more unique is the characters that are part of the team. Again, you got characters like Wonder Man and Julie Power, people that aren't as much A-listers, but the actual story, I just, I I can't really sink my teeth into, but I, I enjoy seeing these characters around. But overall, giving that one two and a half stars, and that is number 14. Moving on to number 13, I'm actually kind of surprised it's so low, but that is Wonder Woman issue 15. And this was just, honestly, your, your run-of-the-mill filler issue. The more poetic side of Tom King as we get to see the Wonder Girls fighting in the background as Wonder Woman is with her child. I again, it was a very filler uh, issue. If you didn't read this one, you don't really miss much. The art was good, but it, it just wasn't for me. I, the This was a little bit too artsy in in my opinion for this book and again I like a good artsy story but I feel like sometimes Tom King leans so far into this that it's you don't really get to see the full scope of where the plot is going and, and we've seen this in other occasions as well so overall giving that two and a half stars and that is number 13. Moving on to number 12 which is Titans issue 17. I was surprised to see this a little lower. I liked the the last issue, but I'm not a Clock King person. I, I don't know if it's supposed to convince us to be a Clock King person. It, it's trying to pull at your heartstrings a little bit. I like the art, but I just want to see more of the Titans. It, it just, the story didn't do it for me. It wasn't a bad story. Uh, it just wasn't to my taste. So that's number 12 for me. Moving on to number 11, which is Powerpuff Girls issue five. For some reason, this was a little harder one to get physically. So I was able to get it digitally on Amazon. I didn't even know if it was released or not. I'm like, was it released this week? I don't know. This issue is kind of your run of the mill Powerpuff Girls issue. I feel like the previous ones have done a little better at being a little bit more unique. But if you like Mojo Jojo, it's from his point of view, he does stuff to the moon and the girls use the robot from the the movie to save the day and, uh, and that's pretty much what happens i i like the more unique ones where you get to see like princess and and that new character that was introduced so i wanted a little bit more of that but if you're looking for you know what what you've liked about powerpuff girls in the past you, you'll probably enjoy this issue well enough so giving that two and a half stars and that is number 11. moving on to number 10 which is Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider issue seven, I believe we're up to. This is definitely leading into that new TVA series that's coming up. They, they're definitely placing the seeds here. I think the thing that lacks for this issue is that it's just a really dark palette for the story it's telling. I just don't think it fits very well. I wanna see more Jessica Jones. That, that was kind of the promise of last issue where you're gonna see them team up. They have a little bit of a conversation, but it's mostly about Gwen and Black Tarantula and their interactions. Again, it's leading towards something that we kind of already know because the series has been been announced so you know there's elements I liked about it but I think this could have been a stronger issue so giving that two and a half stars and that is number 10 moving out of the two and a half star area and uh moving to number nine which is Archie is Mr. Justice issue one if you've ever wanted to see Archie the superhero here it is now, I love this creative team it's the same creative team as one of my favorite books revival and with Tim Seeley and Mike Norton I like seeing them work together as a story itself, it is just Archie is a superhero. I, I don't think there's much else that is introduced here. I think the unique aspects, like I like seeing Reggie as a villain. I thought that was cool. I like seeing it from the POV of Jughead. I thought that was interesting. But honestly, the cliffhanger is the kind of what I, I was like, all right, I'll pick up issue two because I want to see Veronica as a superhero. I want to see her point of view and how that makes things different. So overall, it's three stars. Like if it, it's exactly what it's selling you. I don't think it's anything more or less uh, for the book so given that three stars moving on to the topic of the video which is the rockefellers this is number eight I really respect what Ghost Machine has been doing but I also haven't fully been able to get into any title like I know people love Rook it's just not my thing people like Geiger I, I read the first issue a while back 
wasn't my thing. And this was the closest to being my thing. But honestly, surprisingly enough, I think High Street is the one I've enjoyed the most. Just because I, I like horror a lot. And I, I like the world they're building there. So, so far, High Street's my favorite. So that kind of answers your question of if uh, Rockefellers is the best book. But I, I think this has potential. I just don't know if it's specifically for me. I don't like sci-fi stories, like, at all. That already is a, you know, check off my list. I felt like I wanted more from the family. I didn't really feel like I got their voice. I wanted to grasp my teeth a little bit further. But it was more about establishing the world. And, and I get that. It's not the type of stories I tend to like. But it, 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 if, you know, especially if you've been enjoying the rest of Ghost Machine, I think it, it plays a part of what works for Rook and what works for Redcoat and all those, all those other books. And I love Francis Menopole's art. I think that's really, really what made me enjoy this issue uh, for what it was, was because the art and it works really well with the sci-fi. And I'm somewhat curious to see where these characters go and, you know, how they adjust to these like kind of two worlds that they're playing with the 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 space world and the more grounded story that they they also introduced here overall i gave it three stars i really don't know if i'm getting issue two but the book i've always been very excited for was the halo book that i think comes out next week i i believe it's next week or the week after that out of everything in the one shot that was the one where i'm like i literally can't wait to read this so i hope that's the one i enjoy the most but I, this, it just, it's not for me, but it doesn't mean it's a, it's a bad book. I, I think it's a well-crafted book that just does not hit any of the genres that I tend to like. So, uh, giving that three stars and that is number eight. But let me know in the comments below what, uh, the book from Ghost Machine you're enjoying the most. I have a feeling most people are going to say Rook. Uh, moving on to number seven, which is The Moon is Following Us, issue three. This is another conundrum I have with because I really like Daniel Warren Johnson's writing. Every single time I feel like I'm going to drop this book, something happens where I'm like, okay, now I kind of have to see where it goes. So that's a lot of this issue where I think there's a lot of good emotion because that's just Daniel Warren Johnson. And I like that. I like seeing more of the family stuff. But then there's the other side of like just the heavy fantasy that I just... I can't get behind, you know? I feel like all this week, that's, I usually don't like post-apocalyptic stories. I don't really like sci-fi stories and I don't really like fantasy stories. Uh, I, I tend to like grounded character-driven stories a little bit more. And that's been weird about this because there is that element of really great character work and emotion here. And that ending with the mom I thought was really interesting. But then there's like 20 pages of stuff that I'm not usually into. But I think it's interesting, like, do a power bomb did such a good job at, like, balancing the world and I think the emotion a little bit better. I feel like sometimes the emotion's a little tacked on in this, in this book, but it gave me enough to want to read the next issue. So I gave that three stars and that is number seven. Moving on to number six, which is The Question, All Along the Watchtower, issue one. I really feel like All In has done a great job at just showing a different world of DC and, and just giving us a new platform to play with. That's The Watchtower. It's that these characters, pretty much everyone could be part of the Justice League. And that's where The Question's playing here, where she is a detective on The Watchtower. That, you know, that's the introduction, how she gets there, and, and some more of the emotional beats of, you know, her relationship with Kate. I, I liked it. I thought it was cool to get into her head. It gave me enough to want to read issue two. I thought the artwork was solid enough and I feel like it's a different type of story that we haven't really seen with the character yet. So uh, giving that three and a half stars and that is number six. Moving on to number five, which is You Never Heard of Me, issue one. I I'm a big fan of this creative team. We've actually worked with the creative team on a lot of our covers for our Kickstarters. So I'm already, again, a, a big fan of their art style. And I, I really love uh, what was introduced here. I think it introduced the cast really well. Kind of the, the difference of something like Rockefellers, where I, I felt like this story did a good job of saying, okay, this is the premise, here we are, but this is why you should care about these characters. And I just don't think Rockefellers did that for me. And, uh, you know, I like getting into the family dynamic for this one. The powers are interesting where you kind of see the past and I think the future as well for these characters and, and this kind of weight of the world on, on our main character, teenage characters, uh, you know, shoulders, all while like, they have, kind of have to keep it a secret and they kind of don't because like it's within the family so the family knows about it but they're like oh, I can't tell dad I can't tell my sister and, and there seems to be even just from the cover for the next issue that we're going to dive into those supporting characters even more and I think this is a lot of good promise for you know really well done character work and in a fun premise so overall giving that one three and a half stars and then it's number five moving on to number four 
which is the ultimate Spider-Man issue 11. I really thought the back end of this issue is what really worked here, where we kind of step away from the action and we, we see a conversation between Peter and MJ. But really what put me over the edge was the conversation between Ben and Peter, because obviously you don't get that conversation very often. And I felt like it's very organic and very red herring or foreshadowing. I don't know which yet until we read more of, is Ben gonna die? Is he, I should say that Ben does find out that Peter is Spider-Man because he's a journalist and I thought that was a really cool twist and you know I love the question that Ben asks in the end is like if you died tomorrow would you be happy and he's like no I wouldn't really be satisfied just yet because there's more to do and then the, the conflict I have is more towards the middle of the issue with MJ and Peter I love the conversation between them because I'm a fan of these two characters I'm, I'm liking that they're having conversations but I almost feel like because of everything that's happening in the regular universe and you know being upset that they're not together they almost make these two not have any conflict which is not really fun for characters either so it's like there's this big weighted conversation of you know you're you're spider-man i'm kind of scared about that and then it's i'm sure gonna be discussed more but it's almost like oh okay whatever and i i want a little bit more tension between the two with still loving each other and being like hey i want you to be safe but you know uh this is scary and i feel like they almost get there but then there's like two steps back of like but we need them to love each other uh so i'm curious to see where the balancing act will go there but i like this issue i thought there's some good character work and overall giving that one three and a half stars moving on to number three which is uh, Venom War. It's Jeff, issue one. Love Jeff, love this creative team. And what's really interesting about this one is that it's almost more of a West Coast Avengers issue. So if you liked the Kelly Thompson run from years ago, it it's really just a follow-up to that, which I really loved that run. And I just, I like this being more dialogue heavy. It felt a little different from the other Jeff stories where it's still from his point of view and we get to see him as Venom and, and kind of have this fun, light story about him becoming Venom and having to want to eat because of it. So I like that and I like, but I like seeing the dialogue from the team as they interact and, and react to Jeff doing all this stuff. So I thought it was just simple, fun, great art. And I just, I love the cuteness uh, of Jeff, but also I liked getting a little bit more uh, of a fun story, a superhero story with, you know, cult fan favorite characters like the West Coast Avengers, you know, this version of the West Coast Avengers. So giving that one four stars and that is number three. Moving on to Minor Arcana issue three, and that's my number two pick. I really like this book. I think Jeff Lemire does such a good job at character work. This issue dives into the past of our main character. She had this ex-girlfriend that she loved and she sees that she's moved on. And I think the characters that surround the ex-girlfriend are interesting. Like the husband's not this caricature. He's like, oh, I know about your past relationship and I know that you are an interesting person. I want what's best for my wife. I thought it was interesting because it wasn't combative, but it was also very like, hey, I get it. Like you're, my wife liked you and I, I, you seem like a cool person, but you hurt people around you. And it's because of that interaction that she's like, maybe I should try being a better person to the people around me and, and embrace these powers or embrace this world of, uh, psychicness and ghosts and uh, I just thought it was a really good issue to again dive you into the world a little bit but make it grounded and and make you care about this main character so overall giving that one four stars and that is number two moving on to my number one pick I think it's obvious to everybody and that is exceptional x-men issue three it is just my dream book I love this book so much and it's the book that I just take my time with the most it, it, it's just like I I love seeing Kitty and Emma interacting I love the, the little sly comments of like Emma being fashionable and everyone's like well, why is she dressed like that and her giving all these costumes to to the kids but there's so much deeper story that you could kind of analyze too about Kitty's childhood trauma of being an x-men and trying to push that away all while her having this responsibility to these kids i love the intermixing of her her childhood friend who's not a mutant i you know we never see that with the x-men i feel like it's so rare to see an accepting human character who's just kind of involved iceman being thrown into the mix is great and i love seeing these three characters who are like i don't know what's going on i don't know how to control my powers i'm just this teen and i just feel like it works and and i like again the little nods to in the book too where kitty talks about even just introducing herself as like hey i i'm kitty but also i'm kate and and when she's talking about emma Here's this really interesting conversation of like, I hate you. And then they're like, oh, is she a bad person? Should we not trust trust her? And she's like, 
no, I, we should, it's complicated. And, and I, I love just getting into Kitty's head without like over explaining things. I think it, it does a good job at being like, hey, there's a lot here to uh, unpack emotionally from Kitty, but we're not gonna throw that into your face. There's just gonna be little nuggets until she probably will explode and, and have to talk about it. So I really like this one. I, I, it's just, it's just a perfect book to me. And if you're a Kitty fan, I, I think you'll feel the same. Uh, and the artwork is splendid for this book as well. And it's just so fun to see Emma and Kitty doing their thing. So given that four and a half stars, that is my pick of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what your pick of the week was. And then next week we'll, we'll talk about those pick of, pick of the weeks because I haven't been here for two weeks. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Kamikuno and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.